Hi everyone, my name is Mei Yi and I'm responsible for the management communication part of this iArt plan for Chase. So first of all, let's take a look at what the Chase leadership team structure look like. It's basically divided into two parts, the first one being the board committees and members, and the other one is the operating committee, which are more known as the C-suite. So for the first one, we have altogether 11 members on the Chase board and they have constituted five board committees. Now the second part of the Chase leadership team structure is the operating committee, which is also known as the C-suite. And except for the main C-suite members, we also have other cooperate officers here, including the cooperate communications officer, secretary, controller, general auditor, and very importantly, the IR officer. Now that we have all learned that Chase has a very strictly and properly structured leadership team, it's time for us to move to the most important part of this management communication, which is the leadership transition strategy. Founded in 200 years ago, and now being the ranked number one for the U.S. Customer Satisfaction Bank and also a leading global financial services firm with assets of $2.4 trillion and operations in more than 60 countries, Chase is not only a market in industry leader, but also worked great as a public company that committed to deliver quality figures and long-term values to its shareholders. Thus, the CEO transition is a very critical moment for such a Fortune 500 company like Chase, and so a properly designed succession plan is essential to maintain the previously built perspective on the company from the investors, business partners, customers, and also the employees. The leadership transition strategy is basically divided into two parts. The first one is establish the foundation. And this is a step where the company or the board is selecting the best candidate for the CEO position. And there is a whole process of doing this to make sure the person they find is the best fit for this position. And the second part is announcing the CEO transition. This step is as important as the first step because sometimes even if the company have the best candidate in the world, if they hadn't, haven't handled this announcement process in the right way, it could also like having this really negative impacts on investors' perspective on the company. Okay, so there are three steps in order to establish the foundation to select the best candidates. The first one is to create a written succession plan. So the Chase succession plan should detail how the company's chief executive officer are elected and replaced. The qualification for a candidate to be considered as a future CEO, the board and various board committees in this succession process. Also, this plan should include emergency succession procedures in case of the current CEO's sudden death or vacancy. And then the board should conduct a really regular and in-depth review of all possible candidates from inside the company and outside of the company to examine the candidate based on the baseline capabilities from the previous step. And this could really help the board to narrow down their choices to two to three finalists. Now let's move to the final step of the establishing the foundation, which is the assessment of the final candidates. So here we need to compare this person with his counterpart in and out of industry. And also, we need to pay attention about his understanding of Chase Cooperate Culture because this is what it takes to be a leader in this company. Okay, now that we have found the best person to fit this new CEO position, it's very important for us to also find a way to smoothly announce the CEO transition and to make sure there's no changed mind because of it. So maybe like three or four months before the actual succession date, we need to publish a press release to announce this board decision. The press release should detail both the reason why the current CEO is stepping down and why the investors should be rest assured and believe that new CEO can work as competent as the current one. 
as the press release went out, there, there could be a lot of questions coming from the investors, the analysts, the financial journalists, and all the other stakeholders of the company of Chase. And here's when we hold a conference call for the CEO transition to address all the questions at the same time. And the timing is very important. We are suggesting to hold this conference call just a few hours after we're sending out the press release to address the questions as soon as possible. So these are basically five steps that we need to follow in order to carry out a smoothly handled CEO transition process in order to make sure there's no changed perspective from the investors on the whole company, on Chase. And sometimes we even need to pay attention to small details like timing and the conflicts from the other press releases. This is basically all about the Chase leadership transition strategies and the management communication. And thank you so much.